So let me ask you a question. The, the, or you know, for sake of uh, comparison or a reference point, what you're describing is like a room that has, say, walls, mm -hmm. ceilings, floors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, minimum of, uh, say, six boundaries. Yeah. Two top, two sides, front and back. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of been written about, uh, say, multiple subwoofers in a room mm -hmm. to try to overcome exactly these problems of cancellation and summation. So, yeah. you know, you have so much summation anywhere near a boundary and you have so much cancellation usually in the middle of the room because mm -hmm. the arrival time of the reflections uh, create a complete uh, degradation of the output. Yeah. Kind of doing the same thing by adding, you know, by using a DML. Yeah, well, it, because yeah. you're putting so much uh, energy into the room from th the differences that this is a single source versus multiple sources, mm -hmm. but you're able to diffuse the cancellation characteristics well, by because you have, mul you know, I guess multiple, I guess, but multiple sources coming off the surface of the DML. Yeah. So, so yeah, let me take exactly that point. So, you know, by putting multiple subwoofers into a room, you're essentially distributing right. the, the drive of the room. Each subwoofer drives a mode set in the room. Multiple subwoofers drives multiple, multiple modes, mode, sets. mode sets. So and, it, it, and you're basically trying to overcome the cancellation. Yeah, because you're putting so many sources that it, it kind of, yeah, it, it creates this very, um, you don't locate any, and no particular one is dominant over the other. Right. Largely, so you're distributing it, and and yes, a, a, a way of modelling, say, a, a DML is to think of it as a surface of lots of little radiators, all moving with a slightly different phase relationship to each other. Um, but we and, and people might say, well, how how do you get any energy off a, off the surface of a DML if if it's out of phase, or you know, even though each region isn't say 180 degrees out of phase, there's there's shifts between them. But you could talk about a a net radiating component. So if you were to look at the surface of the panel, and let's say you looked at, say we're looking on axis at the moment, you could say, okay, there's X amount of the surface area moving, generally moving in a positive direction, X amount is moving in a negative direction. And the positive and negative will cancel, but you design your DML through its aspect ratio, through the boundary conditions, through the excitation points, so that any given frequency, you always have a net, uh, a net output. In that, in that area that's coming off. Mm -hmm. And we know with, a, with a, a, a DML in, let's say, of this sort of size, I don't, I don't know exactly off the top of my head how many 10-inch or 12-inch drive units this will be equivalent to, but we know that any given, any given mode or any given frequency, the net amount is probably equivalent to a couple of 12-inch drive units or something. So that's how you get the high efficiency um, and, and, the, and the good output. Because even if it's cancelling, the net effect is that there's always going to be a net output.